look at the first set of reactions to the story. Joining me is Rajiv Pratap Rudi, national spokesperson of the BJP. Also joining us this evening is uh, senior journalist Paranjay Guatakurta, and I have former Raw Chief A.K. Verma with me. May I please ask you, Mr. Verma, first, what do you make of this? Well, it's certainly very, very embarrassing, but uh, the problem is something much more fundamental. The problem is that there is no painstaking application into anything. Chalta hai, that is the common culture, and that is a culture which is to be found in all elements of governance, governing uh, levels, be it uh, the politician, be it the bureaucracy, or be it anyone else. They just don't feel any intellectual integrity towards and, and commitment towards the job they have to do. And therefore, failures of, of this nature occur. Now, for example, in the Davies case, it should have been checked before they left, before the team left, uh, CBI team left here. Absolutely. Whether the documents were all in order. Yes. And if they were not in order, they should have corrected it then and there. But the issue is, why didn't they check it? They didn't check it as I said earlier, is because uh, that sense of commitment no, into no. ensuring that what they do is the right thing and the perfect thing. That is it culture just, is no, no, question is, and is it just that? culture is not merely lacking in one organization or another organization. This is a universal phenomena which affects all of our governing classes. Is it, is it as simple as that? You know, in the Kim Devi case, this can be a case of incompetence. <coughs> but in the Kim Devi case, it's probably more. Because the Kim Devi case, everyone knows there has been an attempt to try and botch up, to try and hide the truth. You cannot like, believe that you can have a CBI official going all the way to Copenhagen and saying, sorry, I didn't get a valid arrest warrant for this man. Rajiv Rudi, I just spoke to your party spokes uh, chief sometime back, Nitin Gadkari. He asked for Chidambaram's resignation. Will that solve the problem? In your view, is that taking it too far? Well, that's a very rightful demand. You see, uh, Mr. Chidambaram came forth yesterday when there, there was a goof up in the list of fugitives submitted uh, internationally. And then he was very belligerent and as arrogant as he should be or should not be. And, and that he said, it's an oversight. Okay, that is done. Now, this very government sends, uh, 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 sends their, uh, the officials to in the court in Denmark. There they see, and it is not even the... The, the, the persons carrying that uh, arrest warrant, it is the Denmark court or the, or the lawyers there point out that this warrant has lapsed. It's, it does not, it does, it's not valid. Then they come back and that's an oversight. So even if that is true, today there is another situation that a man, Mr. Vajul Khan, uh, this gentleman, Mr. Abdul Khan, who has been again a part of the list of the fugitives submitted internationally, is right there in the Arthur Jail in Mumbai. Now, you see, this is government of India. Let's forget, we can pardon Mr. Chidambaram, but what happens internationally? Is this a willful, a willful action of the government to show to the world that, look, all these things are not material to us, or we still need a PIL for the Supreme Court to monitor what Mr. Chidambaram is doing or what the CBI is doing as it has happened in the rest of the cases? This action completely prevails and explains the functioning of the government, completely explains the functioning of the CBI and the reasons why every time for every action, the PIL has to be moved to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court has to tell the CBI or monitor the CBI. Now, the country needs a supervision. That means this government has collapsed. This democratic process has collapsed. That means there is a requirement of some more body like a Supreme Court to monitor Mr. Chidambaram and to monitor the government to do actions which they are they are supposed to do. So, if the national president of the Bharti Janta Party in this state of affairs just asked the resignation, I, I, he just asked the resignation of Mr. Chidambaram. He has not the, asked the resignation of the Prime Minister. I think he has given us still a concession because the situation no, but it's been is described so far. So bad, so bad that this, the no. tom toming and the arrogance displayed by the government is perceptibly. Uh, it's been proven that they have no grounds whatsoever to no, last speak time. what they speak in public. Ra what Mr. Rudy, the press. Mr. Yes. Rudy, the last yes. time when this issue was picked up, yes. one minute, last time when this issue was picked up, we spoke to the Home Secretary of India day before yesterday, then Mr. Chidambaram explained again yesterday. And the bottom line was this, this is a procedural mistake. It is not a deliberate mistake. So, Paranja, I want to ask you. It is a, it's a procedural mistake. G.K. Okay. Pillai said we have not updated the red corner list, you see. So, the CBI did, the, the Mumbai police or informed no. the CBI, but it was informed informally. So, something got lost in the process almost as if it was Chinese whispers. 
Now, this is serious because the list has gone to Pakistan no. and we have told the whole world. But it's not deliberate. That's what the government's or no, argument or no, is. What, what, or, or, what you are seeing is symptomatic of a very, very deep very deep malaise. You know, the government can't dismiss it as a clerical error or a goof up here and there. Essentially, you are dealing with a situation, once again, to be fair, it's not unique to India, but it's suddenly a huge problem is that different departments of the government don't really talk to each other or one another. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand doesn't do. There's lack of coordination, absence of sharing of information between state police departments and the union home ministry. Between the union home ministry and say the research and analysis wing which comes under the cabinet secretariat between the central bureau of investigation which has actually two fathers you have the home ministry and you also have the department of personal and training and then you have the military um, intelligence people which comes under a separate with the ministry of defense you have the the financial and the economic offenses wings the enforcement directorate the directorate of revenue intelligence the income tax department that come under the the, the defense ministry now Typically, all the activities of all these organizations should have been coordinated by a body like the NIA, the National Intelligence Agency. But clearly, we have a long, long way to go. So, we are what we are seeing today is symptomatic of a huge problem, absence of coordination, absence of sharing of information, as a result of which you see these kind of terrible goof-ups which end up embarrassing the entire country. No, you see, this is a, the question here is this. There are so many people who were convicted, accused, you know, by the trial court in connection with the 2000 and uh, with the 1993 serial blast case. Now, for all you know, I'm not taking the name, but you were very well-known film personality. His name could also have been given to Pakistan saying he's also in Pakistan. If this is a procedural error, this is the limit of a procedural error. Swapan Das Gupta, senior journalist, welcome. I don't know if you've heard the full details. I'm, ho I'm holding up just for our viewers tonight. This is the Interpol Red Corner notice as far as this man is concerned. His name is Firod Abdul Rashid. He's a 1960 born, 51 year old man. 51 year old man who is accused in the Mumbai terror attacks of 12th March 1993. In case you are joining the special broadcast, so far we were told by the Home Ministry and the CBI that he's in Pakistan. We charged Pakistan with harboring him. The same list which has Dawood Ibrahim. Now it appears this man has been living in Arthur Road Jail. He has a lawyer. We've spoken to the lawyer. I'll be going across to the lawyer in some time. So, Das Gupta, this is amusing at some level, but I think it's deeply embarrassing at another, isn't it? Well, it reminds me of what we read in the old James Bond uh, Ian Fleming thrillers. The first time is an accident. The second time is a coincidence. The third time is a conspiracy. Now, it seems to be what is happening is far more than just a procedural is issue. We had India downgrading the importance of terrorism in its talks with Pakistan. That was the clear thrust of policy after Sharm el Sheikh, which culminated finally in the Thimphu talks. After Osama bin Laden was suddenly found in Abbottabad, the government of India suddenly woke up and says we must do something for public consumption. And so a hastily assembled list full of holes, lacking credibility, which has been now, whose credibility has been completely destroyed, has again made a mockery of our seriousness in dealing with the issue of terrorism with Pakistan. So I see this not merely as, a, as an example of the lack of coordination, the monumental ineptitude of certain agencies, but I see it also as evidence that as far as our foreign policy issue of Pakistan is concerned, where this was casual and willfully not taken up as a serious priority item. 